Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Scarland here bringing you another Neverwinter video. This video is going to be a tad bit different than most that I release. Today we're going to talk about some important topics. Passion, frustration, and anger. Now if you're new to my channel, well you better buckle up baby. It's going to be a bumpy one. Let's dive right in and talk about passion. What is passion exactly? Well, the dictionary defines passion as a strong and barely controllable emotion. I hear this day in and day out. Garland is nothing but a whiny bitch. If he complains so much about a game, why does he even still play it to begin with? Well, folks... Normally, my excuse for the ignorant some bitch man baby that brings that topic to discussion is that I've honestly just put too much money into the game. I've invested too much money over my playtime to just simply give up and quit. Which is still a true and valid point. But the real reason is passion. I love Neverwinter. I always have since first playing it four years ago. It's not the Dungeons and Dragons nostalgia of playing tabletop back in the early 90s. I didn't do that. I've honestly never one single time have ever played D&D tabletop. I was too busy becoming a man. No offense to you nerds though, Kappa. I love fantasy MMOs, and even though I never considered Neverwinter a true MMO, it's still a fantasy related multiplayer game. So when I complain about the developers doing this or doing that, it's normally a valid reason because I'm passionate about the game. I care about its well-being overall. Now let's get into the dirty side of things. Cryptic Studios lacks passion. Yeah, that's right. I said it. You heard it. I've been in the gaming industry. I've been playing video games. My entire life. Well over 25 to almost 30 years now. I played EverQuest in the golden years. Mr. Brad McQuaid, who I recently just met in person last year for the first time at TwitchCon, had passion. He lived, breathed, and spent every waking hour making EverQuest. Him and his team. Even now in the current era, he's working on Pantheon. But that's later to come with loads of video down the line for future content on my channel. Now I can't speak for every single person that works at Cryptic. I really can't. I've never met any of them. I don't know them in person. And this is not a direct attack on any individual either. However, as a company, you're very sad. The passion has long been gone in the five-year tenure of the game. I discussed this on a recent live stream, but I felt it was time to release a video and put this all out there. It appears that all that honestly matters anymore is meeting the bottom dollar and making sure the quotas are met quarterly. The latest module on PC is proof of that. Mod 14 is an absolute train wreck of a release. Quite possibly the worst release in gaming in the game's history there are more bugs and issues with the re in this current release than actual content itself whether it be the class balancing issues or just the numerous bugs spread throughout the mod how was this build even released to live is beyond me oh wait that's right you have to meet deadlines this is honestly unexcusable the number one leading problem with the entire game already is lack of content. But the company caters to the casual crowd, not its veteran players. One campaign, one dungeon, skirmish, or raid, and one silly mechanic per mod release has and will always be a joke. It really will. Especially when mod releases come about three to four months or so apart. And they've recently stated that they wanted to, you know, only have about four mods per year. So basically the campaign can be finished in a month or less. 
Mod 14 has a new updated version of the hunt system, which is a recycled mechanic from the past two previous mods that can, can also be completed within a month, or if you even push it, only a few weeks. Then after farming the dungeon a week or so and you have all the new gear, the entire mod is complete. Well, congratulations. Now you can sit around and wait for the next release, which is probably still two to three months away, if not more. Lack of content has been an overall issue in the game for ages. So what exactly is the excuse? Not enough time because you have deadlines to push out the newest mod? Nonsense. You are sitting on how many old dungeons in the database that could have been updated to epic versions with new, late, with new loot tables and then released. Maybe having less pizza parties and movie days in the office so you can actually accomplish work would help. It's an overall lack of passion for the game itself. Plain and simple. When you have developers that don't even play the game, it speaks volumes. Of course they all say they play, but of course it's casually. Two hours a day is a casual play base. Again, nonsense. If the devs actually played their own game, and up until the point of actually obtaining endgame status, then maybe, just maybe, some of the bugs would actually get fixed. And don't even get me started on the preview server. What's the point of having a preview server when you don't let us test everything that needs tested before a new mod releases. You have a community manager that treats her job as if it's a 9 to 5 part time affair and that she's holding out until a better offer eventually comes along. I honestly gave her the benefit of the doubt when she took over and Andy moved on. Well, it's been how long now that she's been our community manager? Nothing has changed. Passion. You lack it. If you had it, there would be more community events. More developer streams. More maintenance streams. Hell, even weekly streams. How many companies are out there that do weekly streams for their community? You would be on the message boards, interacting every single day, for countless hours a day. You would be playing the game, even helping in-game, interacting with your content creators. It's literally your job. It's your title. This is the shit that you get paid for. Again, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm not attacking her or any other individual. This is a company problem and it's a disgrace. The owner of Cryptic actually plays a trickster rogue, or at least he did at one point in time. But he's so out of touch with the game itself that it doesn't even matter. He's more concerned about fashion, or the way things are done with the inner office, or whatever the case may be. So my question is, who ultimately is to blame? Wizards of the Coast? Is Cryptic still even under contract to follow what Wizard of the Coast tells them to? Or is it finally an independent title under the company itself? Who knows? It doesn't matter. Wizards of the Coast is ten times worse than Cryptic could ever be. But maybe that's a future video. Now I could sit here and talk about how I'm a thousand times more passionate about this game than the actual company is. But let's just move on. Frustration, which goes along with passion. I literally pull my hair out, or at least what's left of it, in complete frustration on the decisions that this company makes for the general population of the game. Again, as mentioned before, Mod 14 release was a travesty. But there's so much more. How about let's talk about the overall events in the game of Neverwinter. Summer Festival, which you're viewing on the screen right now. For example, it literally hasn't been updated pretty much ever. Sure, they added two mounts last year, yippee. And the introduction of the Saha was maybe the year before, if I remember correctly. 
What about this year? Nothing. Zero. Not a goddamn thing was updated for the event. Now, Reddit forum moderator Manic Gypsy actually had to address this issue on the message board because someone asked, what was her reply? I quote, well, they were too busy. They did stuff for the Jubilee, end quote. Are you flipping kidding me? Too busy? You're telling me they were too busy to do some minor coding and tweaking for an event. An event that comes around once a year? Shut the front door. No, really. Come on. Guys. Seriously. You couldn't even change or adjust the legendary mount rotation? You couldn't even add the new Ruthless Enchantment? You were literally too busy to do anything at all. This shit could have been done months in advance. But I understand. You guys have to do all that work that you put in for the Jubilee and work on the current mod release. Which 90% of the stuff is broken trash. GG fam. You were literally talking about maybe one day's work. Maybe even two days work if needed for a competent coder. What exactly does a normal workday look, at, look like at Cryptic Studios? I, I really honestly wanted to know. I posed this question in my live stream. You come into work strolling around what 9 a.m.? Have some donuts at the round table with Thomas while he tells you stories from his youth. Well, hell, by 11 a.m., it's already lunchtime. By 1 p.m., you stroll back into the office. Maybe do about two hours of work. Oh, well, of course, take a nice little coffee break. Oh, well, look at that. It's 5 p.m. already. Dang, must be time to clock out for the day. This is an utter, complete joke. I have never seen a company that has had a gaming, uh, a game that's been running for five years now and get away with the amount of just bullshit that they do. Normally, the player base would have left. I don't understand. And don't get me wrong, a lot of the player base has already abandoned your game. It's unheard of. Dave Anderson, uh, a.k.a. Mizamat, he was the lead programmer. He just recently left the company for, I think he moved to uh, Telsa. Uh, no doubt it's a huge jump in his career, obviously. However, he had been there a long time, back in the infancy of Neverwinter. So it does suck to lose him. Cryptic already has a skeleton crew, and maybe that's one of the leading issues causing all these problems to begin with. Most of them, now I'm talking about the designers and the development team, most of them are most likely already working full strength on the upcoming Magic the Gathering game. Neverwinter just isn't getting the love that it deserves. Frustration levels are through the roof. And it's not just me. It's a lot of people that have these feelings, especially your veteran community that has been there for on PC for five years, on Xbox for four years, or PS4 is coming up on, what, three years already? Two years? I don't know. I'm the only one with the ball sack big enough to post a video on it. And it's about time that this video gets released. Finally, let's talk about anger. Which again, coincides with frustration and passion. If you made it this far in the video, then you can most likely hear it in my voice. The anger, the frustration, and the passion. The whole reason I would even release a video like this is because these things need to be said. The company, which we are our customers, the company needs to take responsibility for its actions. We are not going to deal with the bullshit. I'm personally not going to deal with the bullshit. It's all there. You can hear it in my voice. These words are true. Now, the publisher of the game, Perfect World Entertainment, who actually likes me, unlike Cryptic, uh, no, really, Manic Gypsy has literally, personally told me 
that my videos and content is pretty much blacklisted by the company. GG, boys. Anyway, Perfect World Entertainment has poured a great deal of money into a marketing campaign for Mod 14. Now, we talked about Mod 14 and how bad it is. Do you really think PWE would have done this if they knew how bad things really were? They would have been better waiting for a bigger mod launch, maybe even Mod 15 if we have high hopes at this point, such, since Mod 14 was so small, we can only anticipate that Mod 15 is going to be a bigger launch. However, they needed to inflate their overall numbers, and I must admit, uh, it's actually been successful thus far. I've personally noticed a lot of new streamers in the community uh, that are just starting the game, making new characters, and actually loving it. I've interacted with these people, I've talked to these people. Uh, I'm not talking about, you know, the sponsored cucks that uh, just took the money to play Neverwinter for an hour and they're never going to play it again. Um, the people I'm talking about are legit people actually playing the game who are just starting out and are actually enjoying themselves. Now why does this make me angry? Because those brand new people know absolutely nothing of what's ahead of them. Or what's even going on right now. So maybe they drop, you know, $20 here. And then maybe another $20 here. And as they fall more in love with this game, eventually even spew out a $50 for VIP or whatever the case may be. Now, times that by, you know, let's just estimate a few hundred people let's just say they get a few hundred new people a month now that's a pretty rough estimate I, I would imagine that number is actually a lot lower it's marketing folks they're milking the casual player race angry yes because yet again cryptic doesn't update anything the zen market is a tragic example of basically a scam system I believe they finally did remove the Blood Ruby pack, which was one of the biggest scams in the entire market, and added the Refinement pack, which is much better. That's great. You know, it really is. But, at, you know, the entire Zen market itself needs overhauled. Unknown players buying things for inflated cash values while the company sits there cashing in, and most likely not even investing that money back into Neverwinter to begin with, it's probably going all toward their new game, Magic the Gathering, right? Come on now. Like, seriously. I'm sure this video is long enough, guys. I, I had to get this video out there. I just, I'm almost to the breaking point at this point. I could literally talk for hours about this. I could give countless examples. I could go on and on and on. However, nothing is ever going to change. I just hope one single patient, uh, one single person, you know, heeds these words and views this video as at least somewhat helpful. As a new player ventures into my stream, I always encourage that player to at least try the game. People can vouch for that. People see it in my stream every day. If someone new comes on my stream and says, hey, I'm thinking about downloading Neverwinter, I usually encourage it. Because there is a lot of content for a new player to go through, right? You're playing a five-year-old title. You're going to have content to catch up on. But the closer and closer you get to end game, the lack of content becomes a factor. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Cryptic, get your shit together already.